Hey there. So this is a little tip video for my dynamic drawing students. Thanks to the uh, COVID shut-in, we need to do our last class virtually uh, via video. And uh, so it's going to be some kind of uh, video of a uh, musician playing that we can draw from. I still have to figure out that what that might be. It could be of uh, Samantha Fish here. I'm a fan of her stuff, and there's also a fair number of videos of her that would be well suited because they are uncut and full body and we can sort of watch her perform for a while without cutting and zooming and jumping around and stuff which is what we really need for this kind of drawing. I've already done just sort of uh, feeling out what I'm uh, gonna do in the demo here. A couple of quick studies, so that's a one minute and a 30 second gesture of this photograph. And so I have the photo up in front of me and I did really quick first gesture this one, 30 second. Then I did another one minute where I got to add some shadows and I've set myself a timer. So um, if you were just doing gesture studies, that would be kind of how you go about it. But kind of the point of the final class would be to do some gestures to warm up and then use gesture like this for your initial captures. Um, but also to have an opportunity to now explore and, and get into more depth. And that'll give you an opportunity to experiment with a different medium. Uh, so you could try wet media, watercolor, ink, especially considering you're gonna be at home at a desk uh, where you're more comfortable not sitting in the classroom. There's gonna be some, some losses. We can't totally replicate the experience of having a live model. Uh, if you were in my, one of the last classes I mentioned, one of the main reasons that live model has some advantages over a photograph like this um, is that you actually have to process your your 3d vision your, your bifocal vision and turn it into a 2d image when you're using a reference photo like this the work is kind of done for you already so you don't have to worry about that particular piece of processing power uh, it means you're not working that muscle so you should you should definitely try to do live study with uh, a model that's not replaceable even even with plaster models the process of looking at a, a 3d image with bifocal vision and processing in your head and thinking about it i think it's also similar to the things you learn from doing sculpture with your hands so like if you're trying to learn anatomy i highly recommend things like sculpting a skull and the parts of the bones that you're trying to understand how to draw the, that exploration of the 3d form and getting close to an accurate rendition in clay uh, even just cheap modeling clay like plaster scene is a really good way to get to understand the form and depth better. And then when you're looking at an image with your eyes and translating it to 2D on the paper, you go through some similar processes of sort of parsing what you're seeing in 3D and turning it into a 2D image. So that's why you want to normally use a real person for this kind of exercise, but you know, we're not going to have that option. So we'll work it out to do video. The school's putting that together. Uh, and in the meantime, I wanted to do uh, this post to give you guys self, give you guys some uh, material to work on this week. So what we see here is a picture of Samantha Fish. Uh, it's an, an interesting, nice upshot too, because it's an interesting angle, and it's, she's holding an instrument, and that gives us a couple of the things I wanted to point out for challenges. Now, one of those is so when you initially do your your core gesture, let's go with this one color. Um, Normally, I usually say, so you start, establish your area, like Oscar wants to get on the action, and then do the core area. Remember, I always say go from head to, to foot. So in this case, it's sort of like torso to foot and then up to head. But notice I've skipped the arms just a bit. So the next thing I want to do along with this sort of layout of, of the body is the axis of the instrument. All right, now place the hand roughly on where you think it should be on the instrument. So I, this is gonna be, the center is actually the instrument, but it's also where the strings are. So I know there's one hand playing right here, just over her hip. And then there's another hand out about halfway to two thirds up the neck, holding the neck. Now I'm gonna go back up and establish what the shoulders are doing. There's an angle like this. I'm going a little slower than I normally would too, just so that you guys can see what I'm doing. And the hips are here. Notice the counter angle, so the spine's doing that angle. 
It's good to think about that. I don't want to just sort of randomly connect these parts. So the, sh the shoulder and the wrist of the hands, wrist, shoulder. One of the things you can do is go from the, the pivot point, the center of the shoulder, to the center, the base of the wrist. Do a light line. And then find the middle and draw a T down. And then at right angles. So not necessarily down, sorry, but right angles away towards where you know the joint's going to be. So it's about halfway. Doesn't have to be perfect, but try to get halfway. That one's a little off, but close enough. And at right angles to the T. Now, if you already compare to the photo, you'll see that I've actually got pretty much right at the wrong most axis is where that elbow is going to fall. So this is how you find your elbows. And connecting, so any, even if you don't do this, connecting a, a hand to the shoulder is a lot easier than drawing a arm out and trying to make it land where you want it to on the instrument. But now that I have this here, it's super straightforward for me to just sketch that in. All right. So then I'm still thinking about rhythms. Remember to give yourself that line across from the ground. And remember, that's actually part of the perspective system. So, you know, there's a vanishing point out there somewhere, um, which is kind of relevant for things like the, the knees and stuff. Um, at this point, I start switching to figurative contour lines. So that's where I often talk about Think about drapery as a quick gestural mark. Strong key hand lines, so the bottom of the dress. The hair has lots of gestural qualities. And then drawing instruments. Pay special attention when you're doing it, because we often carry around sort of assumed ideas about what an instrument looks like, uh, but it's often not accurate. So this is an electric guitar. So one of the things I often do, and this strategy works for different shapes, so it's not just for this electric guitar. I'll often think about, so here's the bottom. I'll find the distance from the hand proportionally. It pretty much comes up just past the elbow. It's right about there. And draw that bottom arch without trying to carry around. See, I'm just doing it. I'm not doing the whole shape. And then I'm going to go over here, and that's about the top of the guitar, and draw the arch you see there. In this case, it's this shape. Then it's not the middle. Notice that the uh, pinch in the middle, the waist of the guitar, is more like a torso. It's further up, so imagine larger hips. And that's a good way to get a, a quick, good approximation of the shape of guitar. I could definitely use some tweaking. I think I have my angle a little different. I've, I've made it upright more. It's more lean back on her hip. So I can tweak that and fuss with it a little bit. Remember, don't just erase your, your issues, your mistakes. Use them to judge and verify and figure out what needs to be fixed and how. So this is about when I would switch to a darker color and one of the things I would do is start blocking in some shadows.
So right now I'm doing the photograph. I'm trying to emulate the way I would work if this was a live moving model. Obviously, they're going to move around a lot more. And the, one of the tricks is that I don't, you know, I don't, uh, I use the really quick gesture and don't stop and talk a lot. And sometime before I get to this stage, I'll have gotten all the information I need to to do my general drawing. And then the model's going to keep playing and doing their thing. I'll keep working on this drawing for a while, but they're not going to be holding a pose for me. But they'll be doing similar things. And so again, you can look up and check your model to validate things like, you know, where's her hemline and her stuff and details about how she looks. But you're not you're not trying to hold on to, first of all, a perfect recreation of that moment that you started capturing. You can you can tweak things if there's something interesting that you can incorporate. If, you've, if, if there's a change in what they're doing that's neat and you want to add it to what you're doing with your sketch, I often will do that. Sometimes it'll be just outright changing it. Sometimes it'll be like, you know, superimposing different moments on top of each other. Um, feel free to experiment a bit. One of the kind of the ideas of this sort of gesture drawing is it's, it's pretty loose. There were some very specific techniques like drawing continuously uh, with a single line and never always going forward, never going back. Uh, that I tried to teach you guys at the beginning, partially because they're just sort of good best practices for breaking certain habits, not so much because they're like the, the right way to do gesture. Um, in the end, it's about making art. So it's all very subjective and there isn't like an absolute one right way. These are just good ways to capture something quickly in these given circumstances. Really a fan of Samantha Fitch's music, which you guys will see. So I'll probably include a video in this post of her. Uh, but she's also interesting to draw. She's got really powerful legs and a strong build. So for me, I find that interesting to draw. So for a lot of quick gestures of musicians, this is about as far as I usually take things. But that's probably a little distorted too because of my camera. There we go. Just to change the angle a little bit. That gives you an idea. Um, so I wanted to point out the little hack of like find the el the sh shoulder and the wrist connect make a T there's your elbow makes it easier to connect those parts and get the arm proportions right uh, it doesn't work for every single thing but it's a great little shortcut and usually I don't do it this dark but I just redid it there to, to spell it out um, you can see I did it fairly lightly and once I've gone through my different stages it sort of vanishes that's a general good quick uh, uh, sort of analytical style drawing hack that works when you're sketching. Um, and uh, that's it. Um, so pay attention to the shape of, of the instruments. Remember to break down the shape. So think of like a guitar, for example. The bottom of the guitar, right? The meridian, the top of the guitar, the head. So the meridian is also the neck. And then guitars don't actually, they're not like just figure eights or simple 
They're more complex. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Not simple forms. They're basically complex compound curves. Usually the bottoms are a little flatter. Like that. And they taper. And then the neck holes often... So think about the center line there. It sort of comes up and kisses the center line. Not the neck hole, the, the sound hole. It would be an F hole on a violin. Violins are similar, but even more complex. So I do the bottom curve and the top curve. And then I do these before I try to connect the dots. And that's a very successful way to, to usually get a violin. Mine's a little stretched out here. I'm not actually looking at one to check more proportions. And again, they have interesting things like the the bridge, if I remember correctly, is sort of up a little high uh, relative to where the F-holes are, which is right in here. And then you usually have that shape and then that shape. Um, there is no like perfect formula for this because every instrument's unique. Even one guitar to the next, some are thinner, some are wider. Proportions vary wildly. So you do have to be attentive. Use your eyes. Remember, this is an observational exercise. Um, that's it for now. Hope uh, you guys have some fun with the videos, and we'll try to get something set up interesting for you guys for next week. Cheers.